Hello, and thank you for watching this regional forecast for the Northeast. I'm Andrew Pritchard, meteorologist with Nutrient Ag Solutions. The hazards map from the National Weather Service is about as quiet as you'll find it here for the end of January. This last day of January, uh, very quiet across the Northeast region. We've got some light snow making its way through parts of the, uh, the Midwest this morning, some dense fog in parts of the Dakotas, dealing with some freezing, frog, uh, freezing fog across parts of Central Texas. Uh, we've got a red flag warning across parts of southeast Colorado. Really a, a, a rather quiet Friday morning. Again, we do have a disturbance making its way through the midsection of the country. Some light precipitation off to the south, some light snow falling across parts of the north. If we flip it over and look at the radar picture again, a very uh, moisture-starved disturbance. So uh, not really uh, producing much in the way of significant precipitation. This is the one that we were watching for the potential for a coastal storm or a potential storm across the northeast you know, several days ago, but the phasing continues to not really be there. That's something that I mentioned in the Friday video. Eric has touched on that over the last couple of days as well, but looking like this storm will uh, begin to intensify after it has moved well off the coast. So some snow possible in some select areas here, especially off toward the north of the areas we've been seeing it over the last one to two weeks, uh, but not looking at a major coastal storm or a major nor'easter with this disturbance. Current temperatures at 5 o'clock this morning, a big range here across the northeast region, anywhere from the single digits to slightly below zero across the far north to the mid-30s, right around freezing across parts of southern Pennsylvania into New Jersey and Maryland. Again, as we just look at the high-resolution NAM model and watch this storm system exit, you never really see it organize any deeper as it moves from the southern plains into the northeast region. We'll bring it back just so I can show you the timing on this. It looks like the precipitation starts to move into the northeast region in the form of some light rain or snow. As we head into the late afternoon hours today, parts of western Pennsylvania may be picking up on some precipitation for your morning commute, perhaps some light rain across parts of New Jersey as well. As we head through the overnight, the storm system quietly makes its way through. Again, some snow possible to the north, but here you already see the heaviest precipitation exiting the coast during the overnight hours as we wake up on Saturday morning. Perhaps some light snow across areas uh, off to the north. Again, anywhere in this region, maybe some light flurries as you wake up on Saturday morning. Uh, but by and large, the precipitation exiting the area. Just one more little round of snow flurries that comes swinging through here Saturday night into Sunday, uh, bringing another you know inch or so to some of the higher elevation areas. So we'll look at the total accumulation of snow that's forecast through the weekend. So this takes us all the way to midnight on Sunday night, Monday morning. Again, just a trace, maybe a dusting across this region here along in north and west of that region. Uh, and then some of the higher elevations of western Pennsylvania in northern New York, perhaps picking up anywhere from two to four inches of snow. But really a, a storm system that's going to quietly make its way through over the next 36 hours. A look at your total precipitation here as well. Again, the heavier rain not getting, it, uh, not getting going here until the storm system has already exited the coast. So just a couple of tenths of an inch of rainfall expected across areas to the far south. Now, as we kind of step through looking at the jet stream, we're going to see several different solutions over the next week or so. What we've got on Friday morning, again, we've got a, a ridge across uh, the Pacific Ocean. We've got split flow around that. So the jet stream comes open over the top. We then see the subtropical jet come racing across. We've got the winds coming together here in the midsection of the country, and that is a, a pattern that leads to sinking motion, really, in a drier air mass. We're not drawing moisture northward from the Gulf of Mexico with a pattern like this. Uh, it's a pattern, again, that leads to relatively quiet conditions from the Midwest into the Northeast. So we head into the end of the weekend, we're going to see a ridge begin to build across the central part of the country. That's going to allow some warmth to return to the midsection of the country all the way from the central plains into parts of the northeast region. And then as we exit the weekend, getting into Monday night and Tuesday, now we've got a new pattern. We've got this trough in the west with winds beginning to race from the southwest to the northeast across the midsection of the country. That uh, a pattern like that leads to the development of low pressure at the surface. This does tap into the Gulf of Mexico, leading to a little moisture, um, with a little uh, uh, deeper moisture available with that storm system. And then even as we head deeper into the week, Wednesday night into Thursday, continuing to see that trough deepen, continuing to see the very strong jet stream winds racing from southwest to the northeast. And that's going to lead to a prolonged period of rain here, especially across the mid-Atlantic into the southeast. As we just put this into motion, watching the progressive jet stream here as we uh, head through the next seven days, bringing it back, here's the trough that's bringing the light precipitation, some of the light rain and light snow to uh, the Midwest this morning. That will bring the precipitation through our region Friday night into Saturday. The ridge begins to build Sunday into Monday, and then by the time we get to Monday and Tuesday, here's the next trough that begins
winds deepening here across the, uh, the southwest into the southern plains before lifting into the Ohio River Valley and then eventually the northeast region. I'm going to skip across the vorticity plot. Oh, we'll let it play real quick. I just wanted to kind of show the evolution here, showing the disorganized uh, pattern right now. These kind of, uh, we've got several little disturbances within the flow here uh, that again are rather moisture starved, rather disorganized, and not going to see any fav uh, phasing here that's going to be favorable for the rapid intensification of an area flow pressure. As we head into Sunday and Monday, again, the ridge comes in. We're quiet and warmer across the midsection of the country. And then here comes the next area of vorticity, that next uh, upper level disturbance comes swinging in here as we get into Monday and Tuesday. Very complex evolution here. You can see uh, two different areas right now. So again, we'll have to watch the phasing of these. That'll help us understand how quickly or how slowly uh, it's going to take for this thing to begin to swing into the northeast region. And that will help us understand how intense this storm system could become. Again, we see the surface response. We see the moisture begin to be pulled northward by this next disturbance as we get into the middle and late part of next week. We can take a look at the precipitation forecast. Uh, this will help us kind of time things out as we head through the next seven days. Watching this first system quietly make its, through the re uh, make its way through the region here Friday into Saturday, some light snow possibly lingering into the day on Sunday. You again see the phasing, the timing just does not work out. We see this storm system really begin to intensify well off the coast of the Atlantic Ocean, about 200 miles further to the east than we'd want that if we were hoping for, you know, a nor'easter. If you're, you know, uh, um, you love torture there and you're, you're hoping for a Friday or Saturday storm system across the region. So again, light snow possible through the day on Sunday, quieter as we head into the middle part or the early part of next week, Monday and Tuesday, looking rather quiet. So as we head into Wednesday that we could start to see some precipitation begin to push into the region. Again, we'll have to just watch how this unfolds. Uh, the European right now wanting to take the, the final wave through here on Friday, bringing potentially some more significant precipitation to the region. But that is seven days out in the future with what I'm letting you know is a very uncertain forecast of evolution. So, uh, you know, my advice to you would be to understand that this is out there. This is a potential solution as we get into Thursday and Friday, potentially looking for a more significant, well-organized storm system. But we've done this dance before. We've seen this advertised a week out and we've just seen it not quite come together with a rather unfavorable pattern. So let's watch this. Let's understand how it's going to evolve over the next several days and just know that it may be out there as we get to the end of next week. A look at the total precipitation that could accumulate here through uh, Friday morning. So looking at the next seven days here, and again, where you see the blue shading, that's where we could see precipitation over a half of an inch. So you're getting along and south of the Ohio River into uh, the southern portions of our northeast region here, southern Pennsylvania into New Jersey and Maryland. That's where we could see an inch to an inch and a half of precipitation. And then as we talk about the potential for some snow, we're looking at the European model ensemble forecast uh, probability of greater than three inches of snow falling. Right now, seeing that corridor greatest from the central plains, parts of Nebraska through Iowa, Wisconsin, Michigan, and then the northern portions of the northeast region. Again, where we've been seeing the fall or the snowfall here, northern New York, portions of Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine looking like the most likely corridor to pick up on some snow. Lots of time for that to change, though, as we head through the next week. We'll look at the temperature anomalies here to wrap things up. Again, watching the push of warmer air coming in as we head into next week. That, again, being drawn northward by our trough that digs in across the west, leading to the area of low pressure across the, uh, the mid um, or lower Mississippi Valley. And then again, it's that counterclockwise flow around that that will feed this storm system with plenty of moisture, bringing another round of heavy rain to parts of the southeast, the mid-Atlantic, and the potential for some snow across the north. A look at your high temperatures then for the next few days. We'll bring this back to Friday, looking at highs uh, above freezing across uh, just about the entire northeast region. That'll continue to increase as we head into uh, Saturday and Sunday. The warmest days await early next week during the uh, work week, Monday and Tuesday, before cold air begins to sink back into the region. Same story as we look at the overnight lows. Temperatures in the teens and 20s for just about everyone this morning. That'll be a similar case as we head into the morning on Saturday and Sunday. As we start uh, warming up next week, we'll see those overnight lows above freezing across Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Maryland on Monday morning. Tuesday morning, overnight lows in the mid 40s across that region with temperatures in the upper 20s across the far north. We then start cooling down as we head into the mid to late part of next week. Have a great day and a wonderful weekend.